This lesson is on finding surface area. And in this lesson, we're going to cover finding the surface area of triangular prisms, which are what you see pictured here, and trapezoidal prisms, which just to give you a flash ahead, these are trapezoidal prisms. If you're interested in rectangular prisms, I have a lesson on that. If you click on the link in the upper right, that'll take you to that. And in that lesson, I go into a little more detail into how to use this formula. So I'm kind of assuming that you've used this formula already. If you haven't, you might want to go watch that first. So this formula is used to calculate the surface area of a prism. Now, a prism is made by taking two identical shapes and connecting them together. So you can see in a triangular prism, you have a triangle and a triangle, and they're connected together. This triangular prism, we have a triangle, a triangle, and it's connected together. In a rectangular prism, you have a rectangle and a rectangle that are connected together. So these are triangular prisms. This formula works for all different types of prisms. So the P stands for the perimeter of the base. Now, the first step in these problems, and really a critical point, is to choose your base. Now, this is called a triangular prism because the base is a triangle. So what I tell my students to do is to highlight the base so that they're focused on the right thing. So in this shape here, the base is this triangle, which is identical to the triangle below. So really, there are two bases. The two shapes that are connected together to form the prism are the bases. So you have these two triangles that are identical, and they're called the bases of this prism. So it doesn't matter which way it's oriented. On this one over here, here's the triangle that's connected to this triangle, and so those are your bases. On a rectangular prism, you can choose any side you want because all the sides are rectangles. That was a terrible line right there, but you get the idea. All right, so the P stands for the perimeter of the base. So the perimeter of the base is just the distance around it. So you're just going to add up the three sides. So 8 plus, look down here, it tells you those sides are 5. So 8 plus 5 plus 5. The height of the prism is defined as how far apart the bases are from each other. So in this case, the height is going to be 7. You don't even have to calculate it. You just read it right from the picture. And what I call big B is the area of the base. So that's going to be the area of this triangle. And so in this case, keep in mind that the formula for the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. And that's why I call this big B because big B means the area of the base. Lowercase b, or small b, stands for base. It's the base and the height of the triangle. So don't confuse those. And this h is not the same as this h. This is the height of the prism, which is the distance between the bases. This is the height of the triangle, which in this case you can see it's right here. Another important thing is remember the base and the height are always connected by a right angle. So this base and height of the triangle are always connected with a right angle. All right, so let's see how this works. It's really simple once you go through it and do a few of these. So we're going to look at this shape here. The first thing we're going to find is P, which is the perimeter of this base. It's already said it's 8. This side is given to you down here. It's 5, and this side is given to you down here. So we're just going to do 8 plus 5 plus 5, and we get 18 feet for the perimeter of the base. Easy. So h is how far apart the two bases are from each other. So that's this distance right here. And that's just simply 7. So h, the height of the prism, is 7. Now, where most of my students get into trouble, the area, the big B, the area of this, so remember, the base and the height of a triangle, again, we're not talking about this H, we're focused on this triangle. The base and the height, they're always connected with a right angle. So this right angle is connecting the base and the height of this triangle, which is the same as this point down here. So here's my base and my height, it's 5 and 5. So to find big B, the area of the base, 
again, remember the formula is one half based on type. So that's one half times five times five. So five times five is 25. Divide that by two, and you get 12.5 feet squared. The foot units on this, this units here are feet. So let me just go back real quick what I did. The base of a triangular prism is always a triangle. So these triangles are my bases. I found the perimeter of the triangle by doing 8 plus 5 plus 5. H is how far apart the bases are from each other. That's the 7. And big B is the area of the base, which is the area of this triangle. The base and the height of a triangle are always tied together with a right angle. So I looked at this right angle, and it's tying together the 5 and the 5. So I did 1 half, 5 times 5, and I got that. So all that's left for us to do is to plug those into the surface area formula. So P times H plus 2 times big B. So P was 18. H was 7. plus 2 times big B, which is 12.5. Now make sure you follow order of operations, PEMDAS, do the multiplication, and then do the addition. So 18 times 7, that's 126, plus 2 times 12.5, that's 25. Add those together, and we get that the surface area is 151 square feet. Remember, area is always square units. And I forgot to mention, what the surface area is, is it's the area of all of the sides of this shape. So if you found the area of this triangle, the area of this triangle, the area of this side, the area of this side, and the area of the back, and added those together, this is what you would get. So this formula provides a simpler way to do that. All right, so let's look at another one here. So the perimeter of the base, so P. Um, be careful. A lot of times my students will think that 3 is one of the sides of the triangle, and it's not. The 3 is this dashed line, and that's giving you the height of the triangle. So the sides of the triangle are this side, this side, and this side. That's the perimeter of the triangle. I think I said height. I meant perimeter. So 6 plus 4, and then this side is given to you over here. It's also 6. So the perimeter is just 6 plus 6 plus 4, which is 16. Just add up the three sides of the triangle. So the H, again, you don't have to calculate this. It's just how far apart the two bases are from each other. And so that would be 10. area of the triangle, one-half base times height. So here's my right angle tying together the base and the height of the triangle. So the height is 3. We already mentioned that. We need this length right here, and that's given to you over here. So the base is 4, and the height is 3. So it's one-half times 4 times 3. So that's 12 divided by 2. So big B is 6. Okay, so I found the perimeter of the triangle, I found the area of the triangle, and I found out how far apart the two triangles were from each other. So now we just plug those into the formula. So again, P times H plus 2 times big B. So P is 16, H is 10, plus 2 times big B is 6. Again, make sure you multiply and multiply before. Before you add, so 16 times 10, that's just 16 with a 0 added, and 2 times 6 is 12. So we add those together, and we get 172 meters squared. So let's look at a trapezoidal prism now. All right, so the way you make a trapezoidal prism is you draw a trapezoid. Actually, you draw two of them and connect them together. So there's a trapezoid here, and there's also one in the back. Now this shape was drawn so that you can't see through it. If you wanted to see through it, you could add those lines in there. Uh, let's see. Add some lines. Uh, this has an arrow on it, but that's okay. So I'm going to go like this. This line.
might not be perfect, and that goes like that. Uh, goes like that. That goes like that. that up to right there and now you can see through the trapezoid on the trapezoidal prism so you got a trapezoid here you got a trapezoid there those are my bases so let's go ahead and highlight those so that we'll be focused on those so I got this line here this line here because again now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the perimeter of this base I'm going to find the area of it, and I'm going to find how far away the two bases are from each other. All right, let's get started. So P is the perimeter of the base. Again, another mistake my students do when they're adding the perimeter, they, they add this line right here, which is 4. That line is dashed because it's not part of the shape. It's there to give you the height of the trapezoid. Okay, so this side is 5. This side right here is given to you over here. It's 3. So I got 5 and 3. This side here is 3.5. And this side here is given to me on the back. It's also 3.5. So I have 5, 3.5, 3, and 3.5. So I'm just going to add those together. 5 plus 3.5 plus 3 plus 3.5. And that comes out to... 15 meters. It's just the distance around that trapezoid. All right, now let's look at the H. This is the height of the prism, not the height of the trapezoid, just the height of the whole prism. And that's defined as this distance, the distance between the bases. So how far apart are those two trapezoids? And that's six. So our height of the, of the prism is six meters. And then the last piece here, and this is probably the most difficult piece, Remember, for a trapezoid, the formula is one half times the height times base one plus base two. The bases are the two sides that are parallel to each other. So that would be this side and this side. And the height, again, this is a different H than this one. This height is how far apart those bases are from each other. All right, so this side here, let's call that one base one. This side here, that's base 2, and then this is the height. And I know this it gets confusing because I'm talking about bases here. This is a base, this is a base, but then I also said what we highlighted were bases, and that's true. And so I don't, I don't know how to keep that from being confusing. Hopefully it's not. Hopefully I'm being clear on what I'm saying. So one half times the height of the trapezoid, which is four, times B1 plus B2, so that's five plus three. Plus three. Again, make sure you follow PEMDAS, order of operations. You have to do parentheses first here. So that's going to be one half times four times eight. And then you can just do four times eight divided by two. So that's 32 divided by 2 would be 16 square meters. All right, so I got my P, my H, and my big B. What's left is to plug those into the formula. So again, the formula is surface area equals P times H plus 2 times big B. So that's 15 times 6 plus 2 times 16. Multiply, multiply, and then add. So that would be 90 plus 32. So the surface area of this prism is 122 square meters. All right, I got one last one for you. Again, this is a trapezoidal prism. The way it's made is by drawing two trapezoids and connecting them together. So I have a trapezoid here, and I have a trapezoid in the back. So let's start off by highlighting those. We'll try a different color here. So here's my front trapezoid. 
really nice that I can draw terrible lines and this program will straighten them for me. I wish that worked on my whiteboard. Although it's a little easier to draw straight lines on a whiteboard. All right, so there's my two bases. So let's just go through what we need. We need the perimeter of the base. So this side's six, this side's four. This side is given to me over here, it's three. And this side was hidden. So this is six, this is four, this is three, given to you here. And this is five, given to you back here. So three, five, six, four. That's what we're gonna add together. Six plus four plus three plus five. Get this guy out of the way. And so the perimeter is 10 plus 8. That would be 18 inches. The height of the prism is how far apart the bases are. That's this distance right here. And that would be 9 inches. And then the last piece is the area of the base. And again, that's 1 half times the height times B1 plus B2. And this H is different than that H. Okay? So, here's a base. I'll call this one base 1. I'll call this one base 2. doesn't matter which one's 1 and 2 because you're just going to add them together. And then this is the height right here. So, plug those in. So we have 1 half times the height was 4. Again, that H is different than that H, right? B1 is 6, plus B2 is 3. Follow PEMDAS, add those together. So I have 1 half, and I'm adding those together first because they're in parentheses, times 9. So that's 36 divided by 2. So the area of the base would be 18 square inches. And I'm running out of room, so I'll have to move this down here. All right, so let's plug those into our area equals P times H plus 2 times big B. So P is 18, H is 9, plus 2 times big B, which is 18. Multiply, multiply, and then add. So 9 times 18, that's 72 plus 90, so that would be 162. And 2 times 18 is 36. Add those together, and we get 198 square inches, or inches squared. All right, so I hope that was helpful and useful to you. If so, give it a like and a subscribe, and feel free to leave me a comment. Until next time.